This is a gorgeous personal custom color palette for a client. And uh, I am John Kitchener and the director of PSC, Personal Style Counselors. And I'm speaking with you from my office located near Atlanta, Georgia. And I just completed another virtual custom palette for a client on the West Coast. And uh, it's just absolutely sumptuous. It's a beautiful, beautiful, vast palette of colors. What's really unique about this palette is it's a very earthy range of colors and uh, it will work very well with her skin, her hair, and her eyes. Again, when someone sends me uh, digital photos taken of themselves in bright, direct morning sunlight, uh, I can then read those on my MacBook Pro, which has a retina display calibrated to noon daylight. And that noon daylight factor and the fact that the monitor is the best in the world uh, really provides the most accurate results for a client. And uh, we have a file of thousands of fabric samples to choose from. And uh, this is really kind of amazing. What's really interesting that I wanted to show you is that this, she has five pages of greens. Actually, there are a couple of greens on, this, on these other three pages here, but she actually has three pages of greens. Some are very dark and subtle. Some are very rich and deep. Some are stronger and, and even more elegant looking. Some are lighter and brighter, and some are very soft and gentle. So all of these three have different moods. So if I were to take this range and put it with this range, these are her eye colors. And what they are, they, she has hazel eyes. And so this is the brown, or the orangey brown in the middle of her eyes. And this is the beautiful yellow green sage color. That's the green color in her eyes. When she wears her eye color, it's a calm, peaceful, trustworthy mood. It's a very, soft, very gentle, very compassionate color to wear. And uh, it's great if you're in the line of therapy and want to, uh, if you're a therapist, uh, this is an excellent, excellent color to wear. So if we change these in order, that's the eye color, and put these in in terms of strength, which I will show you in a second. The eye color is not the strongest. It's going to go down here actually. Her reds have quite a bit of strength to them. There's a, a brighter quality in the first page, and it's a very gentle transition going from the, her coolest red down to her lightest, warmest red. Then there's a range of beautiful corals, which is her range of pinks. Her coloring is so warm that only the corals worked as a pink for her. And then there's this wonderful brick range, which again transitions from the coolest down to the warmest, kind of a dark, chilly color. One thing I wanted to mention about this palette is I kept thinking, oh, these are like spice colors. And indeed, they are spice colors, absolutely. Now, if we take this range, which in this case is the complementary or most opposing color to her complexion, but still in harmony, is her power range. Now, years ago, we used to call these the dramatics. Way back when Joan Songer founded our business in 1964, this was called the eye extension. These were called the reds. These were called the dramatics. And then there was another range called understated. And those have all been changed and, and modified. But these do dramatize your coloring, but they're very strong and assertive colors. Um, the green in this case, the blue, greens, and greens were the strongest and the blues down here were the quietest. These would be more approachable and these would be more assertive. Then if we take this bright light range and see that it's the only one of its kind, she has one page of the sporty colors, which in this case are the, what we call the playful colors. And they are indeed kind of leaf sage greens and they're, they're just beautiful. They're the very vital colors. If she goes to yoga class, she can wear um, one of these as a yoga outfit, or if she goes running, she could wear the green. She could wear her red, she could wear her power colors, no problem, there's no limit on that. But these often relate to sportswear. Then we go to what would be con considered the sophisticated colors. Now those are the beginning with these darker greens, 
And these are based on how they contrast with her coloring. The yellows go quieter. The oranges are more reserved. In other words, they're closer, closer to her complexion. And by the way, we never give a skin tone range. And the reason for that is skin tones are too quiet to wear. They make you look nude uh, from a distance and they disempower your coloring. And this is a tool of positive self-expression. So wearing a skin tone is, uh, defeats the purpose. And then the last range of these sophisticated or elegant colors would be these plums. This is her only range of purples. And there are four little, um, actually berry colors or plum colors. And again, the green starts them in terms of strength. They go into golds and yellows. This is her range of yellows. Again, they're very gold and straw-like. She has these, these continue actually over into these beautiful amber colors. By the way, amber or uh, jade or garnet or topaz could all be gemstone colors or jewelry colors for her. So that would be very, very, very positive as well. So then the eye color would follow the sophisticated colors in terms of energy. And then what we have are these understated colors. And understated colors are a dark neutral. They're often considered an alternative to black because they are so dark. This range um, goes, these are different kinds of of versions of neutral red and a little bit of a plum, which would harken back to this and this as the corresponding neutral version of those. And then these blue greens are her equivalent to navy. She, her coloring is so warm that navies just are, 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 are a negative. If she wants to wear blue jeans, that's fine, but I would never tell her to wear a denim jacket. Uh, the denim color is an indigo or purple blue color, and there are no purple blues whatsoever in this palette. Her range of blue stops at, in the Munsell system, we call that 10 blue, which is about the end of the blues uh, before they become purple blue. Hence, no navy. But she has a glorious range of olive greens. Should probably be great in camouflage. What most people consider neutrals are these colors. These are the beiges and browns. Now these neutral reserve colors, we call them, are um, browns in this case and beiges. She does go from a really rich, almost rust brown into this wonderful leather swatch that we have. It's kind of like a, a ostrich skin brown. And uh, that reminds me, fabric is the best way to match your colors. Um, Paint samples, printed samples, a printed card, painted cards, anything flat that has color in it will, is not as great as the nuance or the richness of color that's expressed through fabric. So using fabric to match your colors is the best source. And then um, in these neutral reserve colors, she has some very soft camels that go down into a beige. Um, these are terrific neutrals. These do get close to the skin tone. In this case, I would say do them as pants or skirts, but not as a blouse because they will be too much of a washout. She, uh, just like Navy, Navy being so cold, black also is very cold on her. Um, in this conservative range, that's what we call these, these grays. These are warm grays, actually. There's even a little bit of green in here. There's a black brown. Um, it's still a brown. It does not look, it looks like a black, but it's actually a black brown. Would be the alternatives to black if she wanted to wear black. She could probably wear black pants, but it just won't be as positive a neutral to go with the rest of this beautiful, beautiful warm palette. Then um, her whites were really off-white. These are some of the most off-white colors that are in our file and they are antique whites. In fact, this is a beautiful fabric we've had for, oh gosh, 35 years. Um, it's a beautiful raw silk. Um, it's a beautiful, uh, really textured piece of material. That reminds me, when doing the colors, I try to allude to the kinds of textures that would work for her. She could probably do corduroy, she can do silks, she could do pleated fabrics, she can do weaves. Um, so, and she probably can even do a velvet or two if she chooses to. So there's a huge variety here. And one thing about matching the colors, 
you don't have to match each individual color exactly. An exact match is fantastic if you can do it. But the way these are arranged, these are arranged in gradations. So any shade that falls in between two adjacent samples would be considered a match. So again, it's not an exact match to go out and find this exact shade, this exact shade, or this one. It's the shades in between that also work very well. So with a palette that's nearly, oh gosh, it's probably over 100 swatches here, um, there's just so much choice. So if you consider those in between, she probably has thousands of colors to choose from, but they are at the level of her lightness, brightness, depth, subtlety, warmth, and coolness that's appropriate exactly to her. That's the idea, to be in harmony. That's what Joan, our founder, used to say years ago. What is our goal? To be in harmony. If you show up in harmony, you're going to elevate the world around you. What is in, in increasing, uh, expressing harmony due to the world? It makes the world more peaceful and harmonious. So this is a tool of peace, actually, if you think about it in the most profound way. This last range are her medals. These are great for jewelry and accessories. She could wear silver, gold, brass, or copper. Yes, silver and gold work fine for her. There, there are systems out there that say, oh, you can only do cool or you can do warm, which means you only do gold or you do silver. In her case, the silvers work very, very well for her. Um, matte silver work fine. She can do copper, even verdigris copper. So there's a lot of choice. So again, this is the, the palette as it is now seen in terms of strength. The one playful page, the very strong asserted power colors, the romantic reds, and by the way, these are great for lipstick and blush choices. I sometimes find that um, when I take a client makeup shopping, we'll even often go right into some of the eye colors as an eyeshadow and, and, and uh, use the darker understated colors as an eyeliner. But again, back to the reds, these are these romantic and for her feminizing colors really are great lipstick and blush choices. So there's a tremendous range here for her. This is really tools for life. And uh, it's the best investment ever. And uh, uh, congratulations. And uh, you're gonna just love working with this. It's gonna save you so much time and money when you shop. Uh, it's just tremendous.